What started as a family trip to the Walmart here ended with an angry father throwing a bottle of brake fluid. Graham says he made it all the way to the end of his carport, but then had to stop because he ran out of cord. Well, Kerry, Sheriff Bill Blanton says he is sure this is the man that bound and shot and killed a mother and daughter last night. Agents say abusers can rummage through your trash and find the pills you simply throw away and flushing them down the toilet is dangerous because they could get into the local water supply. She says when her seven year old approached this sign, a man wearing a black bandana over his face was 100 degrees outside right now. I'm going to close the door and start the clock. Don't come in or? At the age of 71, she tells me what. Oh, well. <laughs> there's only one person Philip Graham will let boss him around. It's about 930. I was cleaning up the kitchen as I was given orders to do so. So when his wife told him to sweep and vacuum the floor, he did just that. But I guess I had just stood up and turned it off and he stepped in the door. Graham says when he looked up, pointed it in such a manner that it looked real. He saw a masked stranger standing inside his home. He said, get down. And the only thing I could find close enough to keep him from coming any further was a Swiffer. Armed with a Swiffer sweeper in one hand and a dust buster in the other, he charged. Prodded it at him and he broke it. And then I started punching him again. I told him, you get out of my house. You sorry SOB, I'm going to kill you. Caught off guard, he says the man with the gun took off running out of his home. Graham says he made it all the way to the end of his carport, but then had to stop because he ran out of cord. Investigators and a canine tracked the would-be robber a few miles down the road before losing track of him. I'm hoping he's learned his lesson. I'm hoping he just learned that not everybody's going to be submissive. Besides a broken Swiffer sweeper. I could have prodded him to death, I guess. <laughs> Nobody else was hurt during the home invasion. Speaking of the Swiffer sweeper, this grandpa has an idea. A heavier pole with an electric cattle prod in it. In Spartanburg County. I guess Dustbuster and uh, Swiffer sweepers are going to make a lot of extra money out of this. <laughs> Elizabeth Owen, seven on your side. In 1938, Sue was 15. Her beau, Vernon McAllister, was 21. The first time I saw his curly white teeth and a big smile, that just drew me to him. That was the summer. He was so sure I was going to say yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> the young couple married inside of a home of a Pickens County judge. Fast forward through five children, 15 grandchildren, eight great grandchildren, and one great great. Sue McAllister, now 87 years old, walks down the aisle with her son. Waiting for her in his hospice bed is her husband of 72 years. Today, you reaffirm your wedding vows to... 92-year-old Vernon McAllister is keeping a promise that he made to the love of his life, that he would live long enough to celebrate their 72nd wedding anniversary and renew their vows. When they brought him over here, he told the nurse, he says, you keep me alive till after the 12. Although very weak, Vernon holds hands with the woman he calls his angel and musters up enough energy to say his vows one more time. Every day I'll never more every day. Let me congratulations to you. Vernon's family thinks he may only have a few days left on this earth. This ceremony is not just a chance for him to make good on a promise he made to his wife. I'm doing fine but a chance for his family to say a final goodbye. He smiles a lot, but he looks like he's crying. But the tears are tears of happiness over a 72-year love story. At the end of the ceremony, the couple's family, along with hospice nurses, sing Vernon's favorite song to Sue. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. And nothing, not even death, can take their love away. In Anderson County, Elizabeth Owens, seven on your side. Sitting at a railroad crossing, waiting his turn to drive across the tracks. It sounds like a, you know, like a real loud car crash. Jamie Dinian witnessed something he's never seen in real life. So I looked up the tracks and uh, the train was done started derailing by then. There was cars just splitting off. You could tell that 
that something bad was going to happen. Within minutes, we were showing you the view from Air 7, a massive mangled mess of metal, 24 cars piled on top of each other, a half mile of destroyed tracks. We apologize for the inconvenience, obviously. Norfolk Southern Eastern General Manager says his crews hope to have this cleared and operational by Saturday morning. But so far, they're not saying how this happened. Yeah, our engines have what's called like a black box on those two. And uh, we'll remove those. In fact, we have. And we're going to investigate those. We'll look at our track structure and the track notes. Norfolk is promising to pay for everything. Representatives are at the Rosewood Center reimbursing evacuees for their overnight stay in a hotel. Uh, hopefully we'll try to make this just as least as inconvenient as possible for you all and, and get out of your, your hair. Although he hopes to be done soon. I know it was just all of a sudden, you know. The residents here will long remember this crash. Once their dream home. Yeah, I heard this terrible crashing, rending noise. Now just an enormous pile of debris lying in the road. At first I thought a piece of the roof just caved in on me. I didn't realize the whole house had disintegrated. Cut up and bruised, but somehow alive. Bruce and Lorraine Donnan are still in a daze from a terrifying ride this morning. I heard a terrible crash and then I couldn't move. I was pinned on the bed by the roof on top of me. The couple was sound asleep in their new home of only three months when a landslide swept their three-story home, basement included, down this mountain. And all I remember is rolling for what seemed like hours, and, and it felt like kind of Dorothy in Oz, and you can't tell what's real or what you're dreaming of. 67-year-old Lorraine was on the second floor while her 69-year-old husband was on the third. Both had no idea if the other one had survived. And I was trapped on the bed. I couldn't even turn around for about a half an hour. We were screaming to each other. Eventually, the two freed themselves and found each other by calling out one another's names. They say what happened next is a miracle. A couple on their way to their grandmother's home in the wee hours of the morning heard their cries. And I heard noise and I screamed and screamed and they came and got us. And Although the retired couple lost everything they owned, they escaped with a few bumps and bruises and their lives. Lost everything they owned, they escaped with a few bumps and bruises and their lives.